Okay, our next speaker is Justin Tremaine. Justin is the Managing Director of Taraco Gold. Thanks, Bill, and um, just like to thank Paydirt for the opportunity to present Taraco Gold today. It's a very opportune time to be presenting at the company for the first time, having uh, just completed earlier this month a transformational acquisition for the company from our largest shareholder in Resolute. So that acquisition was all of Resolute's exploration interests in Cote d'Ivoire, which were extensive, and now takes Taraco to the, the largest, being the largest exploration landholder in Cote d'Ivoire, with over 8,000 square kilometres of tenure, all located on highly prospective Barimian greenstone belts. It also delivers to us a number of advanced projects uh, where we've commenced drilling already, having only completed this acquisition a few weeks ago, and we're looking to define resources very quickly. And that's across the Bundiali Gold Project in northern Cote d'Ivoire, the Ferky Gold Project and the Tongan Project, all within a 100 kilometre radius, which I'll touch on today, and also the Abernia Project in central Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire is a country that we're familiar with, having operated there previously in another company, Exor Resources, which was very successful for our shareholders when it was taken over by Perseus in last year. And it's the same team that's become involved in Taraco and will take these projects forward and we expect to repeat that success that we had in Exor within Taraco Gold. It is the preferred jurisdiction in West Africa now, so I think the strategic value of having the largest landholding in the country should not be lost. As the board, so as I was mentioned before, I joined the um, company about six months ago after the completion of uh, Exor Resources being taken over by Perseus. Um, and had spent a number of years in, in Cote d'Ivoire uh, with Exor prior to that. John Fitzgerald recently joined us as our non-executive chairman, you know, highly regarded company direct, resource company director here in Perth and was also the chair of Exor Resources. Alan Campbell is a non-executive director, ran a company called Papillon Resources, which discovered the world class for cola deposit in Mali, so has experience also in West Africa. Bruce Mowat, who's recently joined us as Resolute's representative on our board and has uh, in-depth knowledge of our projects, having managed a number of these projects within the Resolute portfolio over the last few years. And then Elliot Grant, our exploration manager, who has also ran our uh, technical team within Exor Resources and has spent most of his career in West Africa and knows the geology, the Barimian geology in uh, West Africa better than, better than most people. There's our capital structure, so we're capped at just over $35 million today. We're well funded with just over $6 million in the bank. As I said, we're just embarking on a multi-rig drilling program uh, with one rig already drilling within a few weeks of completing the acquisition. Expect to have a second rig commencing in a couple of weeks, which I'll take you through. It's quite tightly held with about 70% um, of the company held by our top 50 shareholders. And most of those shareholders are now the same shareholders that did very well on Exor Resources and have, are backing the same management team into Taraco. So you've heard, I think, uh, about Cote d'Ivoire a number of times today, so I'll quickly just touch on this. But as I said, it's a country that we're familiar in operating with. It's a country now that's undergone an extended period of political stability over the last 10 years. But most importantly, from an exploration perspective, it's um, arguably the greatest opportunity in West Africa. It's got more of the Barimian mapped Barimian greenstone belt than the neighbouring countries, over 30% of the mapped greenstone belt. Yet it's delivered only about 5% of the ounces on the Barimian greenstone belt. I think that's something that you'll see change over the next few years. And there's no doubt you'll see multiple discoveries made within Cote d'Ivoire over the next few years, including world-class discoveries. And you've seen that over the last couple of years. So as I said before, it really is the preferred jurisdiction to be in, in West Africa, not only from an investment perspective, but also from a geological perspective. A number of companies are operating there and all of those companies, uh, I believe, are looking to grow their position in Cote d'Ivoire. Number of operating gold mines run by Endeavour, um, Allied, which is an unlisted company, Perseus, obviously, and then Barrick as well. And a number of recent discoveries at feasibility stage, Tieto, as you heard earlier today, um, Sentiment are in there now, um, and Montage Gold, a, a uh, TSX listed company. So just touching on our projects, you can see they're spread throughout the country, but really centralised on northern Cote d'Ivoire, covering over eight, eight and a half thousand square kilometres. And most of this ground is granted ground. Over three quarters of that is granted tenure, which is very important 
in Code to Wire because applications can take an extended period of time to be granted. So this is ground that we're able to start working on immediately. As you can see there, it's all very well located ground. Most of this ground was put together by um, Predictive Discovery originally, a company that you um, is now having a lot of success in Guinea, and then was farmed out to a company called Toro Gold, which was acquired by Resolute about two years ago. And Toro did uh, most of the exploration across this uh, tenure and made a couple of discoveries just before they were acquired by Resolute. And there's been little follow-up through um, following that acquisition by Resolute and, and gives us uh, walk-up drill targets to start drilling immediately. So just zooming in on the northern part of Cote d'Ivoire, this is an area of Cote d'Ivoire that our team is, um, has a strong geological understanding, having discovered the Antoinette deposits just to the north of our Bundiali project within Exoil Resources. And then the Tongan North project, which just sits uh, and it actually is contiguous with the Barrick Tongan mining license and covers most of the Senefu greenstone belt between the Tongan operation and the Burkina Faso border, and then out to the east, the Ferkey Gold project. All of this is granted ground and we've got two rigs, one rig drilling now in Bundiali and we'll have a second rig drilling shortly on there which we'll be looking to do undertake resource definition drilling. So on the Bundiali um, project, this sits on the, uh, the Bundiali uh, belt, which I'll just flick back to. So this Bundiali belt extends into Cote d'Ivoire from Mali. It's been reasonably well explored as you, as you saw from Stuart's presentation by Resolute in Mali that's yielded the discoveries such as the world-class Sayama deposit and Taba Caroni, which is probably approaching 2 million ounces now. But as it extends into Cote d'Ivoire and known as the Bundiali Belt, it's um, had very little exploration focus. But what exploration focus has been um, completed has yielded significant discoveries such as the Sasingi operation of Perseus, Exor's Antoinette discovery, which is now part of Perseus, our project here at Bundiali, and then to the south of us, the Kony discovery, which is now 4 million ounces from, by Montage Gold. So here there was a uh, geochemistry undertaken over the 500 square kilometres of granted tenure, which defined significant soil anomalies. The Nyanbu anomaly was most significant, which extends for six kilometres on, on the southern permit that you could see there. Uh, but so outside of Nyanbu, there's, there's several other discoveries which have yet to, uh, soil anomalies which have yet to have any drilling. So all the drilling at the moment has been on the Nyanbu um, uh, soil anomaly. Of that six kilometre anomaly at Nyanboi, there's only been 1.5 kilometres of that anomaly, the southern 1.5 kilometres, but it's been subject to drilling. All of the drilling that you can see on this image here was drilled to 50 metres on, on a pattern basis. So essentially all of those results that you can see there are just in the top 50 metres and in the oxide zone. Very significant, multiple plus 100 gram metre intersections, such as 20 metres at 10 grams, 30 metres at eight grams, 20 metres, two grams. And the grade and the mineralisation is very continuous from section to section over that 1.5 kilometres. But that is entirely open with another four kilometres of an anomalous soil geochemistry to the north that has not been tested and also prospective structures to the south along Strike, which has not been tested. We have an air core rig on site now that's drilling 200 metre step out lines to the north and the south of that grid. And we'll shortly have an RC rig, which will commence in the next week or two to be looking at extending some of this drilling from 50 metres and start pushing some of those high grade zones down into the fresh rock. There was a few holes which were re-entered and drilled beyond 50 metres down to about 100 metres, which demonstrated that those high grade, high grade zones do extend into the fresh mineral in fresh rock with results such as nine metres at eight grams per tonne, you can see there. So it's a fantastic opportunity for a company like Taraco to be able to start work on a significant discovery uh, here at the Nyanbo uh, prospect within the Bundiali project. And you'll see a lot of drilling results coming out of this project over the next one to six months and hopefully will consummate in a maiden jork resource. So that's our primary focus for the next few months. But then as we, as we come into the dry season in Cote d'Ivoire, we'll look to ramp up our drilling even further and we have a track record of, uh, of leaving no stone unturned and, and being very aggressive with drilling. As we saw in Exor, we completed over 100,000 metres of drilling in 18 months. We expect to do the same here. So two rigs drilling at Bundiali after the wet season where we can get access to this Ferkey project also in North Cote d'Ivoire. We bring a third rig in to start drilling on this Ferkey project. So the Ferkey project sits on um, the, the, uh, a very prospective greenstone belt that extends into Cote d'Ivoire from um, Burkina Faso 
Uh, work done once again by Toro Gold a couple of years ago to find a very significant soil anomaly over 16 kilometres. Reconnaissance drilling um, identified the Wahiri um, South discovery and there was just 18 holes drilled into that and that just sits within 300 metres of a 16 kilometre long gold corridor. And here you can see some of the results from that 18 hole drilling program at Wahiri um, South with results such as 25 metres at 3 grams per tonne, 14 metres at 10 grams per tonne, 45 metres at 3 grams per tonne and so on. So great widths, great grades and it's all shallow mineralisation again. So once again provides us a walk up drill target to look at defining resources there. But that's really just a small part of this Ferky project um, given it sits within a 16 kilometre corridor that's been largely untested. So a second very advanced project for the company. Third project, which is some, uh, a project just emerging over the last couple of months as we've undertaken early reconnaissance work involving soil geochemistry is our Bernia project, which sits in central Cote d'Ivoire. Here we've defined a very, it's an early stage uh, project, but we've defined very compelling soil anomalies. So you can see on this screen here, there's a three plus 1.5 kilometre long plus 100 ppb gold anomalies that are supported by soil sampling over multiple lines, not just one or two samples. Never been drilled at all. And right now we have two auger rigs drilling lines across this soil anomaly, which we hope will then result in us uh, undertaking a maiden RC drilling program on this target uh, later in the year. And that project there sits just a long stripe from Endeavour's Fedacro project, which they're under, under uh, completing a feasibility study on at the moment, which is a two and a half million ounce resource at two and a half grams per tonne. So on one of the most prospective belts in Cote d'Ivoire. And then our fourth uh, project of focus is the Tonga North project. This is an early stage, but very exciting and large consolidated position of about 2,000 square kilometres, basically covering all of the Greenstone Belt between Tongan, which is the largest uh, deposit in Cote d'Ivoire as it stands at the moment at 4 million ounces, and covers all of the strike extent up to the Burkina Faso border. Been little work undertaken on this ground over the last years, but what work has been done is define some very large soil anomalies which have yet to be drill tested. And as we um, progress through the dry season, we'll, we'll undertake work, systematic work, which will be essentially auger drilling to test some of these soil anomalies as we undertake resource drilling at our Bundiali and Ferki projects. So that's the Taraco story. It's a brand new company, essentially. Um, very significant uh, acquisition that makes us one of the leading gold explorers in Cote d'Ivoire with a large position of over 8,000 square kilometres. A team that's operated successfully in the country uh, previously and have projects that are basically at uh, discovery stage and allow us to drill out resources very quickly and add value for our shareholders. And in addition to that, a very prospective large land holding for us to systematically explore. In terms of news flow, we only completed the acquisition earlier this month. We have one rig, as I said, already drilling. We expect to have a second rig drilling um, in, during September. So we'll start having drilling results late September and that will continue for the foreseeable future. And I can see us uh, increasing from two rigs to further additional rigs coming on site. And I can't see us stopping drilling in the foreseeable future. So there'll be a lot of news flow and um, hopefully we'll be delivering, delivering significant jork resources for our shareholders and, and value. And we're well funded to do that with over $6 million in the bank and very supportive shareholders, all of whom have backed this team before. So I'm around for the rest of the day. We've got a booth here and also tomorrow if you want to come by the booth and uh, discuss the company in any more detail. Thank you very much. Thank you.